God, you kept us together, Lord. Lord, we just come here to praise your holy name, oh God, to lift you up on high. God, I thank you right now, oh God, for keeping me, oh Lord. Lord, I returned to my home four o'clock this morning. I woke up this morning to my phone ringing and I was gonna page and say, I can't make it. But I thought to myself, Lord, you could have said the same thing and said, I can't make it and not bring me here today. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you for each and every one under the sound of my voice, oh God, who had it in their heart to come and lift up your holy name. God, I thank you right now for giving your only begotten son, oh Lord. Lord, I thank you for our pastor right now, oh God. I thank you for our deacons. I thank you for our trustees. I thank you for every officer in this church, oh God. I thank you for everyone in the pew, oh God. God, I thank you just for being God all by yourself. Lord, because you're worthy to be praised, oh God. God, you make something out of nothing. Lord, you can do the impossible, move mountains. Lord, when there's an obstacle in your way, I wake up in the morning and see that there's nothing but sunny skies. Lord, I thank you right now. God, I thank you for the air conditioning in this place this morning, oh God. God, I thank you for the little things, oh God. I thank you for the big things, oh God. God, I thank you for everything because without you, there is no me. Lord, I thank you right now. I want you to come into this place, saturate this place with your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give God some praise. Anybody glad? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord one more? One more time. We've come to speak a word over your life. Today shall be a day of victory. Today shall be a day of breakthrough. Today shall be a Today shall be a day of transformation. Today shall be an awesome day. Come on, anybody believe it's gonna be an awesome day? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Come on and be glad in it. I can do a lot of things, but I can't make a day. So therefore, I made up my mind that I'm going to praise the maker of this day. Anybody know that he's worthy? He's worthy? Come on, anybody believe that God is still working miracles, that God is still turning it around, that, that God is no shorter than his word? You ought to just look at somebody and tell them right now that walls are still falling, that giants are still falling, that healing is still happening. God is still shutting up the mouths of lions. God is still holding back the fire in your fire. God is still parting the Red Seas. And that God is still working. God is still moving. God is still in control. And for that very reason, I'll just start off by telling them, thank you. Come on, I dare you open up your mouth and just shout what the angels sing. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hey. Come on, I dare you give God just a shout of victory. Come on, just a shout of praise. Set the atmosphere in this place. Open up your mouth and give God some praise. Give God some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. Oh, 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 he's worthy. Come on, come on, come on. You got to push into his presence sometimes. I, I don't know what your week was like. I, I don't know what trials. I don't know what tribulations. I don't know what sickness. I don't know what illness. But I have made up my mind. I'm going to bless the Lord. I don't know about y'all, but I've been, I was waiting all day Monday to get to the sanctuary. Tuesday couldn't come fast enough. Wednesday couldn't come. Thursday couldn't. I know we shot on Friday, but Friday didn't get here. Saturday seemed to take forever, but, but I woke up this morning. Come on, with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. 
Come on, anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Come on. Come on, one more time, one more time. I'm going to leave you alone after this. I know you got your mask on, but I, I dare you just open up and just give a cry of victory. Give a, give a war cry. I feel a change coming. I, I feel a shift. Just open up your mouth and shout unto your healing and shout unto your deliverance and shout unto your financial breakthrough and shout until it comes. We thank you, Lord, that you're moving. We thank you, Lord, that you're moving. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve such a good God. Hallelujah. Feel free to rejoice with us. The song says, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. If you know that to be true, feel free to clap your hands.
the Lord. We said we worship him. So let's give him what's due him. Hallelujah. Oh God, we bless your name. For you've been so good. You've been mighty, mighty good to us. Oh God, so on today, we're not ashamed to lift our hands. We're not ashamed to open up our mouth and give you what's due you. Boy, you're worthy, God, you're worthy, God. Yes, you are. Lord, but you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life.
Jesus' name. Oh God, we saturate the place with your praises. We give you what's due you, for you're worthy, for you've been so good. You've been so great. You've been so kind. Oh God, so we bless your name. So we bless your name. Look to him. All you have to 
do is depend on him. He's releasing strength. He's releasing healing. Even now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you're worthy. Oh God, you're worthy. Oh God, you're worthy. Oh God, we come against every stronghold that comes to bring your people down. That makes us faithless, oh God. But we're depending on you. For you are the true and living God. There's nobody like you, Lord. We saturate this place with your praises. We saturate this place with your praises. It all belongs to you. For you are high and lifted up. You are high and lifted up. So let your train fill this temple even now in the name of Jesus. Walk, talk, and breathe even now in the name of Jesus. Meet us where we are, oh God. Somebody came with a heavy burden. Oh God, I pray that you lift it even now in the name of Jesus. Somebody may be toiling in their mind. Oh God, I pray that you give them relief, oh God, even now in the name of Jesus. Mend the broken heart, uplift the wounded spirit, even now in the name of Jesus. For you're good, oh God. For you're good, oh God. For you're good, oh God. God. Hallelujah. God been good. God has been good to you. God has been good to you. Has God has God been better than good? Has God been better than good? Come on, only you know. Come on, only you know what the Lord has really done for you. I, I, I could start calling things out, but only, only you know, you know what the Lord has done for you. Somebody. Somebody said, he healed my body and he set me free. Healed my body and he set me free. Anybody been healed in the sanctuary? Anybody testify that he is a healer? He is a healer. He is a healer. He is a healer. Anybody testify that he is a keeper? Any of mine keeper? My regulator. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. We got to. We got to move on. We got to move on. We got to move on. Let's give God some praise. The praise and worship team. Hallelujah. Ushered us into the presence of the Lord. Indeed, God has been better than good to me. God has been better good, yeah. There's an ecclesiastical dimension to our worship, which is everybody. But how many of y'all know there's an individual dimension as well? Because can't nobody know like you know what the Lord has done for you. So you've been better been good to me. Come on, even when I wasn't good to myself, God, you were better. Come on, Sister McCray, before I start shouting. Up there. Better than good to me. Let's receive now, Sister Deborah McCray, our church clerk. Hallelujah.
No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a breaking in this room right now. Something, something is breaking in some folks right now. Maybe, m- maybe you don't get it on live stream, but I, I feel some chains being broken right now. Hallelujah. I feel addictions being lifted right now in the name of Jesus. I feel depression being lifted in the name of Jesus. I feel some hearts being mended after heartbreak and heartache and disappointment in the name of Jesus. Come on, I plead the blood of Jesus from the crowns of heads to the soles of feet right now, God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh right now, God. Send in the healing right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, send it in, God. Send the healing right now, right now, right now, right now. Oh! Have your way, God. Have your way, have your way, have your way, God. Come on, I dare you all over the sanctuary. We lift our hands in surrender right now. We lift our hands in surrender right now, saying, Lord, just... Have your way, 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 God, have your way. Somebody's been carrying it around too long, but today is, I declare, today is a day of breakthrough. Today is a day of breakthrough. Come on, if you believe it, do you believe it? You got to believe it to receive it. That today is the day of breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Come on, your load is getting lighter. Come on, your load is getting lighter. We got to move on. We got to move on. We got to move on. I know we got to go, but... Bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been better than good to us. We can't help but just say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to... 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Just... Just 30 seconds just to sit in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So good, so good, so good, so good, God. You've been so good, so good. You've been so good. Somebody lost a loved one, didn't ever think you'd recover or come back, but you're here right now. Hallelujah. Let us, let us prepare now. Hallelujah. 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 Fifteen more seconds. Fifteen more seconds. That's it. You better get it out. You better get it out. Fifteen. 15 seconds, you better get it out this time. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the visitation of your spirit. All that our hearts and minds have felt this day in this moment. Thank you, Lord. Help us to move on now with the service that we may see what thus says the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive Sister Deborah McCray now. Amen. We welcome all of you to our morning worship service on this second Sunday of June, June the 13th, 2021. As we are thanking God for his grace, We are thanking him for his mercy, and we are thanking him for his love. Highlighting our church theme for the year 2021, making decisions consistent with our destiny. And our scripture reading is from Matthew, the 
the sixth chapter and the 33rd verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Our theme for the month of June, making decisions about your talents. Our scripture reading is from Romans, the 12th chapter and the sixth verse. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Please uplift the following persons in your prayer time. Felicia Campbell, Milton Brown, Debbie Barber, Sharima Highland, Janet Stevens, David Cutler, Lily Moore, Mildred Royster, Christy Creighton, Jan Janie Matthews, the Grayman family, and all of our recent families going through bereavement. Our ministry updates. On Monday, June the 14th at 8 p.m., our women's ministry will have their book club using the church prayer line number. To all our women, Sunday, June the 27th is Women's Day. The colors chosen are white with a touch of any color of the rainbow. All assessments can be given any time throughout the month. Please keep it separate from your weekly dues. On Tuesday, June the 15th, we will have 12 noon Bible study on our prayer line and at 7.30 p.m. Bible study on our Zoom call. Sunday, June the 20th, in our morning worship service, we will be celebrating our 2021 graduate. On Monday, June the 21st through Friday, June the 25th, the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education will conduct a virtual Congress. We have placed the flyer with this information on our website under the events tab. You will be able to register from this site. Please continue sending in those contributions for our emergency vacant building fund. One of our members has initiated a pop-up shop fundraiser for our building fund. The pop-up shop is for the purchase of candles with our church name. The candles come in three sizes and five different scents. The pop-up shop will be live up to and including Sunday, June the 20th. Go onto our church website under the events tab and you will see the QR coded flyer. Scan the QR code on the flyer and you will be taken to the site to be able to purchase. Please forward this information to all of your family and friends to help with our fundraiser. The church will receive half of the sale sold within this time frame. So please keep in mind that you must purchase within this time frame for the orders to be credited to the church. So we only have one week left to purchase. This information along with the link can also be found in our church's Facebook page. We also have added information on our community announcement tab. Information regarding COVID-19 funeral assistance from FEMA, the New York State Emergency Rental Assistance Program. This agency provides significant economic relief to help with rental arrears, temporary rental assistance, and utility arrears assistance. New York City has announced it will pay $1,200 to youth from the ages of 14 to 24 who live in the Bedford-Stuyvesant, the Brownsville, the East New York, Jamaica, North Staten Island, and South Bronx areas for taking online courses this summer. The deadline to register is this Tuesday, June the 15th. This is sponsored by NEON, the Neighborhood Opportunity Network, and you should go onto their website to apply. There will be a Juneteenth celebration at Osborne Plaza on Belmont Avenue this coming Sunday, June the 19th, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Lastly, there is a free 11-week training for masonry, and it begins this Friday the 18th. This training includes bricklaying, roofing, pointing, green building operation and maintenance, basic plumbing, and much more. If you are interested, please come see me after service. I do have the flyer with this information. As things are opening up all over our city, please keep in mind that COVID is still here. Every day there seems to be new variants filtering into the United States from various parts of the world. So don't let your guards down. Please continue to keep yourself safe and your family safe. Continue having a blessed day. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Just a few additional announcements. We had the EBA, Eastern Baptist Association Congress of Christian Education, 
and we had a record number of people who participated, led by the very capable and able, our beloved sister Deaconess, Mother Eleanor Kirkland. I want to congratulate Deacon James Bryant, uh, Brother Wyatt Cook, uh, Brother Deacon Wyatt Cook, uh, Sister Deaconess Glennis Cook, Deacon Kenneth Chambers, Sister Kathy Green, Tanya Lewis Johnson, uh, Eric, Deacon Eric Lewis, Sister Sarah Muhammad, uh, Doreen McIntosh, Dennis Reed, Patricia Ann Reed, Deaconess Patricia Ann Reed, Sister Gladys Warren, Sister Zelma Staley, uh, and for all those who participated on starting Tuesday, the 15th, you can pick up your certificates here at the church. Let's put our hands together and celebrate those who wanted to engage in Christian education. I uh, want to commend them on that. If you are interested for the National Baptist Convention Congress that's coming up, please contact the church for more information. Uh, very briefly, Sister McCray mentioned some jobs. We got some other jobs. If you need a job, come holler at us. Uh, can't guarantee, but there are a few opportunities that are out there. We want everybody to do what the book in the Bible says. Have a job. Amen. Amen. Have a job. Amen. Your, your work is your worship. It is your, I know it's called Job. I know it's called Job, but, but your work is your witness, and we'll revisit that today. Looking for uh, a few people. If there's anybody who's watching now as a part who's pretty good at social media, social media, just email the church, Mount Ollie at AOL.com, M O U N T O L L I E at AOL.com. Uh, email the church or call us or let us know. We need to do some things with social media. There's somebody who's good at being a transcriber. If you can transcribe, transcribe and there's some software out there too if you got the software holler at us but we want some things transcribed in writing amen uh, we know that the mayoral race is coming up why is this important that it's a challenge but we are blessed at the same time uh, we are blessed to have at least three capable and able african-american candidates to become the mayor of new york city uh, good friend of mine, Raymond McGuire, uh, longest serving chair at Citibank, uh, Citigroup, uh, one of the longest surviving and lasting people, per period. Uh, despite the fact that he's a black man, uh, he has been around for a long time. He has uh, an impeccable record. We have Eric Adams, we all know, is the Brooklyn Borough president, former officer, has done much for uh, you know, 100 black men in law enforcement. Uh, and, and champion so much. And then Maya Wiley. Uh, Maya Wiley was also a friend, uh, was a contributor to MSNBC, worked on the Civilian Complaint Review Board and, and others. But there are other, other candidates as well. Um, Andrew Yang, uh, I can't say much about that, amen. Uh, Sean Donovan, uh, Scott Stringer. Um, it's about 1,500 of them. What are you saying? You get five votes this year. Use all five votes. As I've studied these trends, particularly on the West Coast, where they really have promoted rank choice voting. Typically, you go in and you just pick one. What is rank choice voting? Rank choice voting is a way to keep you from having to come out a second time. A way to keep you from having to come out a second time. We know that what happens if you don't get 51% of the vote, then it's what's called a runoff election a runoff election. So what ranked choice voting is, is a runoff election day one. So instead of you having to come back, what they assume is whoever was your second choice, the first time you vote, they would probably be your first choice if there was a runoff and you had to come back to the polls. That makes sense? So what they say is to save you time and money, instead of you having to come back out and vote again, whoever is your second choice, Put that down, your third choice, your fourth choice, and your fifth choice. So in case your first, second, or third are eliminated because they don't get enough votes, guess what? Your vote still matters. Your vote still matters. So at ranked choice voting, now ranked choice voting will be for mayor, for city council, uh, borough president, and comptroller. It will not be for the, for the district attorney. 
That's what, um, public advocate district attorney is more of a, a state office, uh, but every other candidate, mayor, city council, borough president, public advocate, comptroller, early voting started, I believe, yesterday, June 12th. Uh, we're doing souls to the polls. Uh, if you know those in church, try to go today, try to register today, do early vote, let's get this done, it's so important. Why is it so important that before COVID-19, a billion dollars were being stolen out of the black community every year? Before COVID-19, we had public safety issues. Before COVID-19, it was estimated, well, during COVID-19, that 40%, that 30 to 40, up to 50% of black businesses were gonna go out. Before COVID-19. Before COVID-19, 2053, they estimated the median household wealth of black families would be $0 in 2053. Some of us still gonna be alive in 2053 if the Lord Jesus tarry. And imagine the state that we are in. You know how many millionaires were made during COVID-19? A whole lot of millionaires were made during COVID-19. But guess what? A whole lot more fortunes and resources were lost during COVID-19. So it's so important that we are active and engaged. This is going to be one of the most important mayoral elections of our lifetime. Uh, of our lifetime. So please be mindful of that. Those are my last set of announcements today. All right? All right. As we push forward in Bible study, we had two wonderful Bible studies. If you can make that 12 noon, something special happened on that 12 noon Bible study. Lord Jesus. I teach it, and I don't even want to come back at 730, because I'm like, I done got everything I got at the 12 noon. So y'all pray. Please, we've been going through the introduction. This, this Next week, we'll talk about activating your spiritual gifts. Activating your spiritual gifts, which will be the topic again today. Activating uh, your spiritual gifts. Follow that. We'll be accelerating your spiritual gifts. Accelerating your spiritual gifts. And then finally, making your spiritual gifts work together. That's the four part series over this month. There'll be some uh, church announcements coming soon. We're going to have a church meeting real soon, uh, trying to figure some things out and share with everyone. Amen. All right? All right. Y'all ready? Now, they watching online. Y'all got to help me sound real good when I ask it. Y'all ready for the question? Y'all ready? Uh, all right. Guess what, Mount Ali? It's offering time. Oh, y'all almost had it. One more time. It's offering time. Look, why is it a blessing? Because I cannot grow what I do not sow. As the praise team comes now, I cannot grow what I do not sow. Indeed, God has been abundantly good to us. Abundantly good to us. Let me pose this proposition for you. What if God said, I'll give you a, ch I'll give you a choice? Either you give me the tithe or I charge you for every breath you breathe. What if God said, I'll charge you for every beat of your heart? I don't know about y'all. I don't know if I, I'd be too broke to pay attention. I, I, just, I just throw in the towel, just lay it down, y'all. But all God asks for is one-tenth. Thank you. Just one. Just one. That's it. That's all we asking for. I don't need to say much. You know. Y'all heard the parrot last week. Ah! You know. Y'all know. Y'all know what come next. The offering is above and beyond the tithe. The principle remains the same. Y'all, I'm, I'm trying. They say you can't beat God given. I made up my mind. I'm going to try. What I have discovered, the more I give, Ah, bless his name. The more he keeps on giving back. Get your seed in your hand. If you're like me, you give online. Three ways to give. Cash app, give LaFi, envelope. I really want to really dare you. This is one of the only times in the Bible God says, try me. Try me. Y'all remember growing up in the streets when it'd be a fight? And only the person who knew they was going to knock you out with the one here to quitter, they'd be like, try me. Come on, help me, somebody. I thought I was talking to some folks from Brownsville. Come on, Ville. Where you at, DeVille? They could only say, try me, if they knew they could back up what they were talking about. Y'all not praying with me. How much more do y'all believe that God can back up what God has promised, that God would throw open the windows of heaven 
always more windows than doors and pour out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. We're going to come up with a pledge, y'all, that we're going to say together. We're going to come up with a, with a pledge. The, the, these are the gifts that you have given us, the seeds that you have deposited in our hands. All you're doing is testing us, God to see if we will try you at your word. A seed is no good in my hand. Sunflower seeds, they taste okay. Pistachios, they're not really seeds, but I like pistachios too. But the truth is, God, they can do little in my hand, if anything. But Lord, something miraculous happens when I place that seed in the soil great things begin to happen so Lord now we sow these seeds in eager expectation and faith God I believe this is a season where you are going to pour out in abundance in Jesus name God I just received that and I, I feel it in my spirit I pray that some, some brothers and sisters feel it in their spirits too and are compelled and act on faith Lord, bless these seeds that are sown that we may continue uh, to work on the building next door, to continue the work of this ministry and all that you have placed in our hands. It's in Jesus' name we pray and say amen. As the ushers come, we'll get ready to hear from our praise team, and then we'll see what thus says the Lord. Amen.
Hallelujah. Anybody know that you are blessed? You are blessed. Hallelujah. Back in the days of the Old Testament, that song, I believe, had its origins because word had got out that God was just the God of the hills, just the God of the valley. God said, I'm victorious. And I believe it is translated today to say, you blessed whether you in the city, whether you in the field, whether you on the block, whether you on the bus, whether you on your way home. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Indeed, we are grateful. Let's turn now, if you will, to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 6 and 7, I believe. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. As we continue in our series on spiritual gifts, on our introduction, spiritual gifts last week, we talked about the fact that we are spiritual millionaires. You're, if you got one talent, one gift, you are a spiritual millionaire where'd you get that from Matthew 25 it says that the terrible of the talent that one talent was 75 pounds of gold 75 pounds of gold terms the price per pound today is 1.6 million dollars God has entrusted you with 1.6 million dollars of spiritual currency we talked about last week, and I'm just doing my introduction now, so you can have a seat till I get ready to read the scripture, but I want y'all to know where I am so that we are all tracking together. Revelation, Revelation talked about that we shall rest from our labors. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, and that rest from your labor has been misconstrued to make you think that labor or work are wrong or evil but they really have divine origin, that we all are workers, that our work is what our witness, our work is our worship, all right? That we are called to do three things, to work, to witness, and to worship. To work, to witness, and to worship. In Genesis, reason work got a negative portrayal is because of the original sin, the fall. Remember Genesis 3.17, I believe, where God tells Adam that the ground is cursed for your sake and by the sweat of your brow. If I was somewhere else, I'd say, you're going to have to work your something off for the rest of y'all life. That's how I talk. I'm sorry. Y'all pray for me. But you know, the, they do say, studies show that they say people that cuss are more honest. Because you don't just care. You're just going to say what's on your mind. Look at somebody say, you ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. Y'all pray for me. But anyway, the point that I'm making the ground was cursed, so you got to work, and that work is equated to a toil, to a struggle, to a labor. And when we make it to heaven, it says we shall rest from that form of labor, that form of labor. Remember, Revelation 21 tells us, and it's in said others, in Isaiah 65, cross-referenced together, that there shall be a new heaven and a new earth. And Isaiah 65 laid out some of the essential work that will happen in that new heaven and earth. We're going to be building homes, building houses and homes and planting vineyards. 
There will be work and labor that goes on. But heaven is not just about your vacation. It is an extension of the work you do on these terrestrial shores. That's why discovering your spiritual gift is so important. That's why it's so, it's so important. Because when you do that, you get a foretaste of glory divine. Mm, I just said something. When you are operating in your spiritual gift, you get a, a, a preview. I'm preaching already. I'm just going to go ahead and start preaching. You, 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 you get a sneak peek. You, you, get, you get a sampling. Y'all ever been somewhere and they had the appetizer sampler? where you could try some of everything. I wish I had a little help in here. And it helps you to decide and decipher what you really like. That, that when you engage in your spiritual gift, it is a foretelling of what is to be. And if you don't get it right down here, you're going to be real confused up there. Amen? Your spiritual gift. Why is finding your spiritual gift so important? Because in finding your spiritual gift, you find the joy of life. Renew unto me the joy of my salvation. How many of you know you were saved from something to do something? Come on, come on, y'all. That, that, that you were saved from something to do something. God didn't just save you because God ain't have nothing else to do. And see, if you like me and you're going to go ahead and tell the truth, as hard as the word, as hard as the Lord had to work to save me from what God's, y'all not going to help me in here, from what God had to save me from, that's why I work so hard now. Because see, don't nobody know like I know what the Lord done brought me from. Huh? And when I think of the goodness of the Lord. This, this is where I'm starting off. Let me transition. Rome, Romans 12 and 1, which is where we're going to start before we're going to get, get to 2 Timothy. But Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech thee therefore, brethren. I implore you, I beg you, what? By the mercies of God. Somebody asked the question, why should I be working? Because when I think about the mercy of God, I need a few folks who are not ashamed. See, grace is God giving me what I don't deserve. Somebody about to shout right here. But mercy is God holding back what I do deserve. And I believe there's a few people who can go ahead and testify and tell the truth that the only reason I'm here right now is because of the mercy of God. You ought to look at somebody and tell them I don't look like what I've been through. What you see right now ain't nothing compared to what the Lord has already brought me through. And when I think of the mercy of God, when I think of how many ways he's made, I made up my mind that I'm going to work the work of the Lord. I'm, I'm getting too happy too quick, y'all. But, but I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That you present your body a what? Living sacrifice. And we talked about it in our worship, our work, and our witness in the everydayishness of our lives. See, the reason that Paul calls for a living sacrifice as opposed to a dead sacrifice Y'all know what happened in the Old Testament on the dead sacrifice. They would slay an animal and lay it on the altar. They would set the sacrifice ablaze and the aroma would rise to heaven in the nostrils of God and it would create atonement because it would be a sweet aroma that got rid of the stench of sin in our lives. How many of y'all know this sin stinks? Sin stinks, and in order to get it right in the Old Testament, that there would have to be the sacrificial offering that would take out the stench of our sin in the nostrils of God to get us back in right relationship. But the problem with the dead sacrifice of the Old Testament is that it was just one and done that I would have to sacrifice and it would get me right that one time because it was one and done. I couldn't kill the animal more than once. I couldn't burn it more than once. But what is Paul calling us to? That we ought to present our bodies a what? A 
living sacrifice. That means that I ought to be sacrificing and worshiping God from the time I wake up in the morning. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that has gotten to the place in your life where when my eyes wake up, I can't help but just say, thank you, Lord. You done let me see the sunrise of another day. Thank you, Lord, that I'm in my right mind and my, my hands are working, my, my, my body. Thank you, Lord, and, and I have made up my mind that I'm going to be a living sacrifice. That, that means that I'm not one and done, that every day of my life I'm demonstrating my appreciation and my gratitude. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, pleasing unto God, which is our operative word, reasonable. Reasonable service. What I love about God is that God is reasonable. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. God is reasonable. I just got through talking about it. In terms of our tithes, why do you think God only asks for one out of ten? Because God knows that if he put too much out there, it would keep us from doing it. I wish I had some money in my pocket. Because I don't think y'all really understand the principles of how God works. God says, I'm going to give you ten. All I want is one, and you get to keep nine. I'm going to give you ten. All I want is one, and you get to keep nine. Reasonable. God is a reasonable God. He says, this is your reasonable service in response to my mercy and the greatness and graciousness that I have displayed in your life. That's our introduction. All right, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Today, we're talking about activating your spiritual gifts. Activating your spiritual gifts. Good to see Reverend Munderland here. Amen. First, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. This is what the word of the Lord reads from the New King James Version of the Bible. This is what the word of the Lord reads. And I've already finished most of my sermon. We're going to be out of here in just a second. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift. Matter of fact, let's go back to verse 3. Let's go back to verse 3. Let's start at verse 3. I want to give you the full context as you may miss something. This is Paul talking to Timothy, his beloved disciple and servant. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance... The genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded is in you also. Focus now, if you will, on verse 6 and 7 now that we have the context. Therefore, I, operative word, remind. The church say remind. Remind you, second operative phrase, to stir up the gift, let the church say, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Listen, if God didn't give it to me, I don't want it. Because if it didn't come from God, I know who it came from and I know he has not my best intention in mind. For God has not given you a spirit of fear. What did he give you? A spirit of what? Of power? Of love, and depending on your translation, a sound mind or self-discipline. You may have your seat. We know the word of the Lord is already blessed. I want to talk about how to activate your spiritual gift. How to activate your spiritual gift. How to activate your spiritual gift. As we talk about identifying your spiritual gift, we went to great labor on the last two Bible studies on Tuesdays and, and laying out the scriptures on last week, Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 list a litany of spiritual gifts. But I want you to expand your thinking beyond that list. Okay? I want you to expand your thinking beyond that list. That I believe that there are spiritual gifts that exist today in terms of the form of the gift the form of the gift, what it looks like that would not have existed in that day. 
Y'all agree with that? That imagine if Peter and Paul had Instagram and TikTok. I can't get no help up in here. All, all they had was parchment paper to write letters that could only be read in one congregation's hearing or one individual at a time. Amen? But, but when I talk about spiritual gifts, and the reason I'm setting it up like this, is that a spiritual gift is anything that you have as a natural talent or ability that you're willing to commit to the body of Christ, to the kingdom of God, and to serve the least of these. And to serve the least of these. Can I make my argument real quick? Matthew 25, we've been building up on Matthew 25 in preparation for this series, talking about the talents, the five talent, the two talent, the one talent person. And remember the introduction to this parable, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man, a master, who before going on a trip gives his talents, gives his gifts, gives his resources to his servants, goes away a great distance, okay? And God is using this through Jesus to illustrate for us this nature of talents and the fact that God has an expectation for each and every one of us, that there will be a return on the investment that God has given us. There will be a return on the investment that God has given us. So first it tells us the kingdom of God is like. It is illustrative of what we talk about. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, we got the kingdom of God from the model prayer, the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is where the will of God is done on earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is done on earth as it is in heaven. So in Matthew 25, when Jesus is laying out this, st this story of this parable, and he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man going to a far country who gives his gifts, his talents, his resources, his money in the hands of his servants in expectation that they will produce a return. Okay? So, so, so the first thing, why, why do we have gifts? It is that we may be servants in service, the kingdom of God, okay? The second dimension, Romans 12 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there is another analogy that Paul uses, and that Paul analogy is the imagery of a body, the imagery of a body, that we all are members of one body, one body in Christ. That's why there are people in the sanctuary who grew up Church of God in Christ, grew up Pentecostal, AME, Methodist. But when I start preaching and the spirit hits, <laughs> that, that, that same spirit, help me somebody, begins to move you no matter your background. You may not even fully understand everything that I'm saying, but something resonates on the inside. And that is demonstration that we are all connected by one and the same spirit. And I thank God, y'all, that it's only one spirit because if it wasn't one spirit, I'd be real confused because there's all type of junk being peddled out there these days. But the Bible says you got to test the spirit by the spirit. And it is the spirit of God that indwells us, brothers and sisters, and we are all members of one body through one Christ, through one spirit engaged in the service of the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Second thing. First is the kingdom of God. The second is the body of Christ. And then finally, we finish in Matthew 25 again. Matthew 25 again. There are three parables or three stories in Matthew 25. The first is of the foolish virgins. The second is of the parable of the talents, which we spent much time dealing with. The third is the sheep and the goats. The sheep and the goats. Y'all remember the story of the sheep and the goats that when Jesus comes in his full glory and splendor, he says that they will gather around and he will send some to the left and some to the right and they will be distinguished. They will be discriminated against based upon if they were sheep or they are goats. And how does Jesus qualify this distinction between sheep and and go. He says that those who are on my right hand, the sheep, they are the ones who when I was naked, they clothed me. When I was hungry, they fed me. 
When I was thirsty, they gave me water. When I was in prison, they came to see about me. When I was a stranger, they brought me in. But the goats who are on the other side, they asked the question. They said, Lord, when did we see you struggling and not helping you? Jesus said, as often as you have done unto the least of these, come on, help me somebody, you have done also unto me. So what is the point that you're making? That our spiritual gifts are to be deployed for the least of these. God cares about the widows. God cares about the orphans. God cares about the voiceless. God cares about the oppressed, depressed, suppressed, and every other type of press you can think of. The depressed, the stressed. God cares about those people. And if you want to be walking in the will of God, you got to care about who God cares about. And I stopped by here to tell you that God didn't give you that gift. Because God didn't have anything else to do. God gave it for you to employ it in service. Employ it in service. When it's all said and done, y'all, when we stand before our maker, you, you do know what the standard will be. Well done. My good and faithful what? Servant. I can't hear well done. Good and faithful servant if I've never been a servant. If I've never been willing to serve. If I've never done good work, there's a whole lot of mischievous workers in the church. But if I've never done good work, I won't hear well done. My good and faithful servant. If, if I show up when I want to, I won't hear faithful. If I show up when the weather's right, I won't hear faithful. If I show up when I feel like it, I won't hear faithful. But I don't know about y'all, but I want to hear well done. My good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant. Let me push on. Let me push on. That 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 the preliminary uh, uh, remarks are uh, to let us know a couple things. A couple of points that I would add. Number one, everybody has a spiritual gift. Everyone has a spiritual gift. We went to great lengths in Romans chapter twelve, verse three. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter twelve, verse seven and eleven are just a few examples that illustrate for us when Paul is talking about our spiritual gifts, he says, as each has been given, which is suggestive to us, brothers and sisters, that everybody has a spiritual gift. So everybody has a spiritual gift. Now, when we get to this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 1, as I was meditating and praying, Lord, how can I deliver and convey a message that will activate, activate men and women's spiritual gifts? will activate. Lord, let me to this passage. Let me share a couple, three quick points with you, and I'll take my seat. Amen? Amen. Three quick things. Contextually, you got to understand that Timothy, again, the beloved disciple of Paul, and Timothy was a young man engaged in ministry work. And as he is engaged in ministry work, what begins to happen is that the older generation, I need to move on, amen, uh, begin to challenge his leadership. All right. And the second dimension outside of the church and even within the church, there is this great heresy that is looming about like a cloud that has set on a foggy day that will not go anywhere. It doesn't really hold you back, but it's just a nuisance. That's the word right there. Let me encourage somebody that when the haters and naysayers show up in your life, it ain't nothing but spiritual fog. It can't stop you from getting to your destination. It just makes it inconvenience and gets on your nerve because you can't see everywhere you're going. But in the fall, what you have to do is have faith to trust God one step at a time. So what the devil meant for bad, I wish I had a little help in here. God can and God will and God is working it for your good to teach you how to trust God one step at a time, one day at a time. Like spiritual fog, y'all, that, 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 and when it exists. And the spiritual fog of that day was this notion, you've heard me talk about it before, called Gnosticism. The root word of knowing. And there was a distinction that the Gnostics were making as they were lifting and, arise, and calling, causing to arise a heresy in the church. And the Gnostics were so focused on the mental and the spiritual at the... At the, at the um, 
at the separation or at the, at the, at the, uh, the compromise or the challenge of the flesh, that, that, that they tried to so focus on the spiritual, they talked about that Jesus was not an actual physical person. That he was just a ghost or a spiritual. And they had us to so focus on the spiritual and the intellectual. These were pseudo-intellectuals. Y'all know pseudo-intellectuals, don't you? When it comes time for work and the church, the pseudo-intellectuals are the, philosoph the philosophical ones who are always talking but they never doing. We all know about the philosophical intellectuals in the church when it comes to work. They can tell you what to do and how it ought to be done, but they ain't never going to roll up their sleeves and do it themselves. And what was happening is that this Gnostic heresy had begun to loom heavy in the church like a spiritual fog that was frustrating young Timothy. He's being challenged on every side. There are challenges to his leadership on every side. But listen to the encouragement of Paul. Listen to what Paul says. Therefore, I, am, I want you to be reminded to stir up the gift of God that is on the inside of you. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Three things very quickly. Y'all understand. Y'all with me so far. Amen. Three quick things, three quick things. Number one, I, I went to great lengths, I think, trying to, to, to illustrate for you that, number one, you have a spiritual gift. You have a spiritual gift. But number two, really, I guess it's, it's number one. Point number one, second step in the process of understanding this. Point number one is that you have to understand that the reminder, the reminder suggests a couple things. Number one, that the gift was already in him had already been demonstrated, but every now and then we need somebody to remind us to activate our spiritual gift. Every now and then we need someone to remind us. Let me read it again. Therefore, I remind you, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. That, that one of the great frustrations in life sometimes, brothers and sisters, is that stress, trauma, and drama will cause you to suppress your spiritual gift. Will cause you to doubt your spiritual gift and your ability. And what you need are godly mentors, a godly support system around you that every now and then shows up in your life to remind you of the gift of God in your life that shows up every now and then to remind you of the favor of God in your life. Don't you know the devil has dispatched adversaries who it is nothing but their full-time job to try to beat you down, tear you down, tell you what you ain't, what you will never be. But in the name of Jesus, we rebuke cast down and destroy every attack of the enemy and I have come like a spiritual Paul to remind you of the spiritual gift of God that is on the inside of you my brother and my sister this controversy that is happening, Paul has to encourage young Timothy whose faith has been frustrated because he is working and laboring and he wants to give up and throw in the towel. But what Paul has to tell him is, I want to remind you that God has already given you the gift that you need to turn this situation around. Let me help you with this, my brothers and sisters. The question of where does my gifting come from? What I pray in the name of Jesus that you are reminded of before this month is over is I believe that 99% of people God has already revealed to you what your spiritual gift is. That, that the understanding of our spiritual gift is more of a discovery process. You must have the right mindset that I am discovering rather than creating. See, creating is depending upon me. What I want, what I think. But if I am discovering, I am discovering that which already exists. It is not just easily apparent, therefore I got to put in the work to discover it. That's why I like the discovery channel. I ain't going to press on that. But, but, but in the discovery, what happens is that I realize that God has already given me a gift and it's up to me to discover. Now, this is what I want you to do. As you, if you find yourself in that place, I want you to just pray. I want you to be praying. I want you to be praying, Lord, help me to rediscover. That's all I want everybody to focus on this month, just one spiritual gift. 
Just focus on one. Lord, help me to rediscover. Help me to discover my spiritual gift. I want you to pray that. Seriously, genuinely pray, pray that. God will answer y'all. Now, in discovering or rediscovering my spiritual gift, where does it start from? Your natural gifts. Your natural talents and abilities. I've said all the time, if you're mean, God is probably not giving you the spiritual gift of encouragement. Somebody get that on the way home. If, if you can't hold a note in a glove, you probably don't need to be in the choir. Y'all going to get real quiet on me on that one. If you are shy and don't like public speaking, God probably ain't called you to preach, teach, or prophesy. If you don't love people, God probably ain't called you to the healing and miracle ministry. If you don't have patience, God has probably not called you to the ministry of mercy. How many of y'all know mercy takes patience? If you don't like smiling, God probably ain't called you to the ministry of hospitality. <laughs> ain't nothing hospitable about a person who look like they suck in lemons every day of their life. Y'all not going to help me in here. I'm trying to teach, y'all. I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to, trying to get us there. But listen, start with what are your natural talents and abilities? Ask God to remind you of those moments when you felt another level of excitement. A level of energy and enthusiasm about the work that was before you. What are the areas in ministry and in life that cause you to cry? What do you do when you do it, you lose track of time doing it? What would you do for free? I'm trying to give you some questions to ask yourself. What would you do for free and not even worry about it? What do you enjoy talking about? Particularly if you're not really a speaker talker and there's something that excites you and you love talking about it. Maybe it's fashion. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's social media. Whatever it is, this is the point that I'm trying to make, is that it is a natural gifting. It is a natural talent or ability that God has given you. Now, what turns it to a spiritual gift is when you employ it for spiritual purposes. To uplift and to embody, to, to uplift and to edify the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, and the least of these. Y'all with me? Yes. Let me move on. Let me move on. Second point. And what you want to pray for is that God will, first thing, that God will remind you. Because I believe God has already shown you. You've already discovered what gets you excited. Now listen, let me say this too. That there's a part of this that there were some things, if I could just be honest, that I got excited about that I knew it had nothing to do with God. At least I got Brother Kyle who looking at me like, I feel you, new. Amen. But God bless y'all. But listen, I, I need some folks who will tell the truth. There's some things you may be excited about that you have not discovered how they can be employed for the will of God. And I want you to spend that time thinking about those things that may not be in line with kingdom business and kingdom principles, but try to investigate why do I get so excited when I do it? Why do I enjoy doing it? And what you will discover, brothers and sisters, is that the initial impulse that you feel is not wrong. It's how you channel that energy. It's how you allocate those resources and that time. Are y'all praying with me? That, 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 that there are some things that, that, that are only wrong because of the way you do them. I knew that God gave me the gift of gab at a young age. Can I go ahead and tell y'all the truth? I ain't use it to build up. Sometimes I use it to tear down. 
I haven't used it for the work of the Lord. Sometimes I use it for my own work. I wish I had a little help in here. But, but, but what I had to discover is the natural talent, gift, and ability, and I had to decide that where attention goes, energy flows. That when I shifted my attention from me and what I want to the things of God, energy flowed, revelation flowed, ideas flowed, and opportunities followed suit, brothers and sisters. First point, remind. Remind. Second thing, to stir up the gift. Stir up the gift of God. I told the story, maybe you've heard me preach this, tell the story before, that in my house growing up, I was always the Kool-Aid maker. I know in this new day that these young folks don't know what Kool-Aid is. But how many of y'all remember we had the Kool-Aid that was in the little packets? Help me, somebody. And there was sometimes you couldn't even afford Kool-Aid. It was the off-brand Kool-Aid. Help me, somebody. Can we go ahead and tell the truth up in here, up in here? Yeah. That, 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 that the Kool-Aid, y'all, that what would happen, I was the official Kool-Aid maker in my house. And I was good at making Kool-Aid. I used to make lemonade, too. That was one of my first businesses. I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid, y'all. What would happen with the Kool-Aid, though, y'all? You know it's that good Kool-Aid. Yeah, you, you put the water in the jar. And you begin to pour the contents into the, yeah, into the water. And, 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 and if you're really from the hood, you put it underneath the faucet so you can swish it around a little bit. Get that Kool-Aid out the corner because you wanted it to be Kool-Aid delicious. I'm getting thirsty just thinking about it right now, y'all. Somebody run to the store and grab me some Kool-Aid. I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm almost done. But, 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 but what made my Kool-Aid so good is that I would put, yeah, I had one of them transformer thermoses. Y'all remember lunchbox? Y'all remember lunch boxes? I had a transformer lunch box and it had a thermos. Y'all know the thermos tops, the little plastic cups that you could pull off and you could sip. And if you had the newest lunch box, you was the coolest kid in school. Yeah, I understand now about the dangers of sugar and diabetes, but I used to take that thermos and I put it all the way down in the bottom of the sugar bowl. Y'all had a sugar bowl too. Don't look at me like that. That You may have had the paper wrapping inside of a plastic sugar bowl, but everybody had a sugar bowl. I stick that blue cup down in the sugar bowl, I get two things of sugar. And if I really was drinking it myself, I'd get two and a half because wouldn't nobody else get the shakes when they would drink my Kool-Aid. And I'd put that sugar down and I would watch in my creative mind, my, my, my inquisitive mind, I would watch the, the sugar settle to the bottom, y'all. And that bottom of that uh, the bottom of the water with the, the coloring from the Kool-Aid and the sugar sitting right there. And I had a particular spoon that I used. It was an orange spoon. And it was my spoon because one day I set it too close to the oven. And you know how them plastic, silverware, plastic utensils had a little burn mark on the side. Come on, help me somebody. But it was a part of my testimony. You ought to look at somebody and tell them that my burn mark is a part of my testimony. Think I might have got one of the beatings of my life in that day, y'all. It was a part of my testimony. But what would happen, brothers and sisters, I would take my spoon. And I would stick it down in the bottom of those two cups of sugar. And I would start to just move and stir up. Help me, somebody. Stir it up, stir it up. Uh, yeah, and sometimes after you're reminded what you need somebody to tell you to do is just to stick your spiritual spoon down in your soul and start to stir up and agitate and move. Uh, and what you discover, brothers and sisters, uh, is what I started out with is not what I end up with. Uh, that the water was bitter, it had color, but it did not have flavor. And I just stopped by here to tell somebody uh, that it's time that you activate your spiritual gift by sticking your spiritual soon uh, spoon down in your soul and, and stir it up, stir it up, stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you.
Y'all, y'all sit down. Y'all making me nervous. I ain't done yet. I still got one more point. How do you do it? How you do you do it? How do you do it? First of all, you need the remembrance that you got it. You need the remembrance of how much it took God to give it to you. I said it earlier that one of the things that has convicted me more than anything else here recently is I read a meme on Instagram that says it is the ultimate act of arrogance to procrastinate on the things of God. Because it assumes that God got to give you another chance. Is there anybody who recognize God don't have to give me another day? God don't have to push out another breath when I push one in? God doesn't have to keep my heart beating. God doesn't have to keep the blood flowing through my veins. So as as an act of my reasonable service, I've got to work the work of him who called me. Remind yourself. Quit procrastinating. Stir up the gift. What does the stir up the gift suggest? That there's something you got to do on your part. Something you got to do on your part. One of the, the, the spiritual wanderings that I have discovered is that so many people are waiting on God to just hit you with a lightning bolt. Waiting on that writing on the wall. But, but how many of y'all know that God speaks in a still, small, subtle voice? It was the prophet who was asking about where was God. And God was not in the lightning bolt. God was not in the fire. God was not in the wind. God was not in the breaking of the rocks. But God was in the still, small voice. And still, small voice happens in prayer. That still small voice happens when you're reading the word of God. That still small voice happens when the man of God or the woman of God are preaching and revelation hits your spirit and you know that flesh and blood has not revealed that to you but our Father who is in heaven. There's something you got to do on your part to stir up the gift because discouragement will come. But that's why God left on record the story of David and Ziglag when David had to encourage himself. See, every now and then in the midst of it, you got to encourage yourself. First of all, remind yourself that I got a gift. That that God has given me something. No matter what is going on, how I feel, I'm going to stir up the gift of God that is within me right now. Then finally, I close when I tell you this, that you got to be reminded that it is a gift. I said it last week, and I'm going to close right there again because I'm hoping somebody gets it, that it costs God too much to give you that gift. He had to go down uh, through 40 and two generations, ride the train of nature for nine long months, stamp off, oh yeah, in the dusty streets of Jerusalem. He had to be led of Calvary's heel. You know how the story goes that they hung him high and they stretched him wide. I said it last week, uh, but just in case you didn't get it, uh, the question was raised uh, why did they have to put nails in his hands? Because his hands had to be nailed that they could set my hands free to do the work of ministry where God has called me to do. You ought to look at your hands right now and say, Lord, I thank you that there's no nail marks in my hands. But you took the nails to set my hands free. But I'm so glad that it didn't just stop with his hands. But somebody can shout about the fact that he took the rivets in his feet. That's why I'm riding my bike. That's why I'm walking through the neighborhood. That's why I'm pacing up and down because I'm walking the walk. I'm trying to talk the talk. That's why they put the vinegar in his mouth to cleanse it out that our mouths may be liberated, that we may declare the goodness of the Lord and all that God has done. Somebody asked why the crown of thorns on his brow, that my mind may be set free, that my mind may be liberated uh, to recognize that it ain't about us uh, but it's all about him Uh, if it's all about him uh, you ought to tell him thank you 
Somebody asked the question, uh, why did they pierce him uh, in his side? Now, legend and story has uh, that when the water and the blood came out, um, it was because they pierced him through the lung and through the heart. Uh, and how many of you know uh, that he had to be wounded for our transgressions? Uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, that he had to set loose my lungs uh, that I may open up my mouth uh, and declare the goodness of the Lord. Uh, that his heart was pierced uh, because of the hardness of my heart. Uh, had to be liberated and let go uh, so that I could serve the Lord. Uh, I gotta leave you now. Uh, but my soul about to get happy uh, when I think of what God uh, did for me. Uh, is there anybody uh, that can shout off of Romans 12? Uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Uh, I beseech thee therefore brethren by the mercies of God. Uh, God what you kept me from. Uh, God what you held back. Uh, God what I deserved. Uh, I beseech thee therefore brethren uh, by the mercies of God uh, that you would present your body uh, a living sacrifice. Uh, holy and acceptable uh, pleasing unto God uh, which is uh, your reasonable service uh, I stopped by here to tell you uh, it's time to activate your gift uh, start praying to the Lord uh, Lord show me how you want to use me uh, show me your way uh, show me your will uh, and I will work the work of the Lord uh, somebody asked me why uh, cause when I think of the goodness the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done. He ain't asking me for much when I consider what he did for me. He ain't asking you for much when you consider what he does. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Morning by morning, he been good to me. So because he's been good, I work a good work because I want to hear well done I know you think that this life is it you heard us said earlier that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love this life to death when it's all over he will come back the bible says there'll be a crack in the sky and we will know that the dead in Christ uh, shall rise first uh, but the rest of us uh, if we're still here uh, shall be caught up uh, to meet him in the sky uh, don't know if I'll be dead uh, don't know if I'll be caught up uh, but I do know one thing uh, I'm going to see him again uh, when I see him uh, I'll tell him thank you he won't try to care uh, about what you say uh, He'll ask the question, uh, what did you do uh, with what I gave you uh, to do it with? Uh, if you got one talent, uh, you ought to work. Uh, if you got two talents, uh, you ought to work. Uh, if you got three talents, uh, you ought to work. Uh, if you got four talents, uh, you ought to work. Uh, if you got five talents, uh, you ought to work. Uh, no matter what you got, uh, give it to the Lord. Uh, and he will yes he will yes he will when it's all over I want to hear well done ah, well done my good and faithful servant well done well done, my good and faithful servant. That's all gonna matter, y'all. I don't care how much money you got, you can't pay your way into heaven. I don't care how fine you think you are, you can't you can't charm your way into heaven. I don't care how immaculately dressed you are. Listen, you're going to have to change clothes when you get to heaven anyway. How many of y'all know I got a robe, you got a robe. We got a robe up in glory. <laughs> yeah. 
What will the standard be? That 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 twenty fifth chapter of Matthew. Were you diligent? Did you care enough that the bridegroom was coming that you had enough oil? That's a whole other word right there, y'all. Don't be caught with a lamp with no oil. No Holy Spirit, no anointing, no power, no favor. The bridegroom coming, y'all. The bridegroom is coming. And guess what? I can't give you what I got. I don't care how much y'all like my preaching, how much you like my teaching. I ain't got enough to give you to get you into heaven. It's non-transferable. It's a personal decision. And then there's going to be the question of the talents. God said, I made you a spiritual millionaire. You've got something. You've got talent, my brother. You've got talent, my sister. You got amazing ministry gifts. And when the master comes back, it says, after a long time, what's that say? That God is going to give us enough time to do what we need to do. And when he comes back, the great question is going to be, what did you do with what I gave you? So the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven to the body of believers. But then that last parable, when he separates the sheep from the goat. See, it wasn't that the goats didn't do good stuff, but they did stuff conditionally. They did it because they thought they were going to get something from it. They did it for the wrong reasons because they asked the question, Lord, when did we see you and not do? Which is suggestive of the fact they did it, they just didn't do it at the right time for the right reasons, and they had the wrong motivation. Are you willing to work for the least of these? Y'all, we in Brownsville. This community needs us to be our best. We're dealing with eternal matters of eternal consequence. I don't know about y'all. I, I, I want to be in that sheep crowd. How I get there, I got to use the gifts God has given me to the least of these. That, that when I use them, it got to be for somebody else. It can't be about me. I can't be so spiritually minded that I'm no earthly good. The first parable was about spiritual dimensions. The third story is about our natural responsibilities. I'm done. I done kept you too long. Listen, the doors of the church are open. Maybe there's someone here. I was trying to make, I was recapping about activating your spiritual gifts. Why is it so important? Why is it so important? Because it costs too much. That, that every now and then, what that suggests is that if uh, Timothy, who could be around Paul and see miracles, signs, and wonders, his faith could be frustrated, how much more? In our lives, can our faith be frustrated from the spiritual fog? When in the name of Jesus, I come to tell you, it's just fog. It's a nuisance. It's frustrating, but it can't stop you from where you're going. It can't stop you from where you're going in the name of Jesus. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you remind my brothers and my sisters of their spiritual gift. That time they engaged in ministry and they experienced the joy of salvation. That indescribable joy. That joy that feels like spiritual goosebumps on the inside. That joy that feels like going out uh, and being in the cold rain and getting wrapped and then you get to the door and your mother is there with a fresh towel right out of the dryer and just wraps you up and you just feel a flood of emotions. God, bring it back. Remind in the name of Jesus is our prayer. And as you remind God, we accept personal responsibility. That the gift will not be stirred up until we stick our spiritual spoon down in the bucket. Agitate and spur. Other translation says fan the flame. 
The flame is there, but we just got to fan it. Another translation says you got to get it white hot. That's the highest level of heat, which means you got to work real hard. We accept personal responsibility now, God. But then, God, we always remember that it is a gift from you. Lord, if we're honest about it, we've been mad when we've given natural gifts and people hadn't appreciated. We've given gifts to somebody and went over to somebody else's house and found that same gift. And we was like, the nerve of some folks. <laughs> Lord, you've been good to us and you've given us garments of clothing and we let somebody else use it as a gift and they came back, it was dirty and soiled and messed up. We were frustrated, we were upset. How much more, God, do you have a right to be angry and frustrated with us if we do not appreciate and use this gift you have given us? We repent now, Lord, in the name of Jesus for inactivity. We repent now, God, for burying our talents. We repent right now for hiding in a space of mediocrity because of others' insecurities and fears. We repent for running away from you like Jonah when we should have been running to the call. We repent like Moses, oh God, who didn't think that he was able. And God said, ain't I with you? God said, what's in your hand? Everything you need is already in your possession. We repent for the time we've been like the ten spies that went out and says, but there's giants in the land. But Lord, you've given us your promise, your word and your assurance. We are who you say are, we are. And we shall do what you say we can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, we've already opened the doors of the church. If there's one who would come now to give your life to Christ, to join this, the Mount Olive Baptist Church, or if you just need prayer, we invite you now to come from wherever you are. Is there one? Is there one? If there's someone online, Mount Olive at AOL.com, 718-385-3261. You can call, send an email, let us know that, that, that if that is you, if you desire to give your life to Christ, to join the church. This is the moment, this opportunity. If you're around a sanctuary, you can just slip your hand up right now. If that's you, just put your hand up. Look, come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Deacon McCants, go upstairs. Go upstairs and get that brother. Hey, go upstairs and, and, and get We got one today. We got one. The Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice. The angels in heaven rejoice. The angels in heaven. Well, we ain't going to let the angels out praise us, y'all. Come on, the angels in heaven rejoice we thank God uh, for the one who has come listen God bless you heaven smile upon you we're going to take care of this listen we know you could have been anywhere in the world but you chose to be here with us indeed we are grateful indeed we're thankful be here same place same time next week as we get ready to go out there is a special message from uh, Congress I mean from Borough President Eric Adams about his candidacy we're going to end our service now give the benediction we're going to allow that video to go before we end the stream those who are in the sanctuary you'll be able to see it on the screens as well is that correct that is correct and we're going to do that so i'm going to pray and give the, bl the blessing and the benediction now and we may do that whether you want to sit or stand that's up to you but we're going to it, uh, to give the benediction now amen amen Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you for all that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Now, God, bring to remembrance. Remind us that we may be activated. God, if there's someone under the sound of my voice who is still struggling, still having issues, have them send an email to mountolly at aol.com and we'll set up a session. Because I am serious about us discovering at least one spiritual gift. Because once they discover God, I want them to put it to work in the church. And it's my prayer, oh God, that it's our prayer that that may manifest itself in this season. 
Now, God, bless us and keep us as we go from your gathered people to your scattered people. Rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. We promise to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. If you be so kind tonight, let every hour of sleep give us two hours of rest, that we may be refreshed and revived to run on to see what the end will be. In that name that is above every name, the mighty, marvelous, miraculous, majestic, magnanimous, and magnificent name of Jesus the Christ, all the good said together, amen. amen. Amen, amen again. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Go in peace. We'll see you next week. For those who are still in the sanctuary, we're going to get ready to watch uh, the video, and then we're going to, that'll give me a chance to get to the back to, to greet you. I am Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, and I'm running to be the mayor of the city of New York. Thank you, Reverend Reginald Lee Bacchus and all the membership at Mount Ali Church. The power of the church. Sometimes we say that and don't fully embrace the meaning. I know the meaning. It was through the power of the church that allowed me to become who I am. I reflect on the days growing up in South Jamaica, Queens. We attended a small storefront church. We used to say it was the Cheers Church. Everyone knew your name and everyone was glad you came. We would attend services during the day, take a break, and then come back in the evening. During that break, my mother would speed my five siblings, and me. But oftentimes, we did not have anything to eat. And the church members became aware of that. And one evening after the services, a car caravan of women from the church pulled up to our home. And they started unloading boxes of groceries. They delivered it to our family and placed it on the countertop. We all prayed. And after they left, late that evening, I went downstairs and I looked inside the boxes. They were all open. Half a box of spaghetti, half a box of rice, half a box of all the items you can think about, half a jar of mayonnaise and mustard. And I realized that those women could not afford to buy us groceries. They gave us half of what they had. They emptied their pantries and their cabinets and divided up what they had. That touched me so much because I started to reflect on every Thanksgiving, they would leave canned goods and a turkey on our back porch. During Easter time, they would leave six pairs of slacks, shirts, and shoes for my siblings and me. And during Christmas time, they would wrap gifts and leave it on our steps. They had this thing called the susus, where they would all collect their money each month to help mother pay her mortgage. That is what I know about the church. And when I was an advocate in the police department fighting for reform and someone attempted to take my life and shot out my car windows, I was shaken and afraid. I woke up that morning and women from the church were touching my building, holding a Bible, saying a silent prayer, putting a covenant of safety around me. All my life, I have known the power of the church. And it's with that that I'm taken into this journey of becoming the mayor of the city of New York. I know the power of the church. I know you should be doing our affordable housing and senior housing. That's why I want you to have the air rights and the vacant lots on your blocks. I know you should be doing the reentry programs. What is a better reentry program than a church? You don't ask the crime that was committed, the time served, 
You just welcome people back in. I want you to run the food pantries and receive the funding that is needed to feed those who are in need. And who better can handle the emotional illness that's associated with COVID-19 than the church? You are doing the work already. You just need a mayor that recognizes what you are doing. That's why in Brooklyn Borough Hall, the first office I opened was my faith-based office. And our partnerships have been amazing. We've done some great things. Imagine what we are going to do together when you have a mayor that understands the power of faith-based institutions. I need your help. I need your support. I believe that this is a Matthew 21 and 12 moment. Jesus went into his temple. He saw that they were doing wrong in his temple. He did not sit down at the table and participate. He turned the table over. I am going to City Hall to turn the table over. It is time for a mayor to understand that 65% of black children should not be in an educational system where they're not meeting proficiency. That black mothers and brown mothers should not die 12 times the rate of white mothers from maternal morbidity. That we don't have to have violence on our streets and overzealous and abusive policing. We can go from being betrayed to becoming to become who we ought to be and should be. And so I thank you for allowing me to have the opportunity to greet you. And most importantly, I thank you for your support throughout the years. Let's make this city a city for everyone. May God bless you. Let's continue to keep the city in prayer. This is a Esther 4 and 14 era. God made me for such a time like this. Thank you. Paid for by Eric Adams, 2021.